yes, 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 hello Instagram. I am um, not Matt Abbott, as you've probably realised. Um, so Matt's off on a little mini honeymoon with the lovely Maria. Probably sat um, quaffing champagne somewhere in a hot tub. And I'm here um, to cover for him, really. So I'm going to do a poem just to give people a chance to join. Hi, yes, hello Ema. Hey Mads. Okay, this is going well. This is going okay. All right. Hi Carla. Yes, this is now a party. Um, so I'm going to do a little poem um, before we get going. So last Monday I wrote this poem. I had a really important job to do last Monday so I had to um, speak the truth about something that had been um, buried for a long time um, and on the morning um, of that day I um, cleared out my front yard with my boyfriend and I wrote this little poem um, and it's called Spuds. At the start of lockdown I planted a spud Shoved it deep in a tub under a foot of mud and then did what I do best. Left. But it still grew. Took up fat chunks of the air in the crag bale view, unsightly and holy, riddled with bugs and holes. I gave up. But you knew. To keep on, keep on, keep on pushing through. And today... On this day of truth, I stuck my hands in deep to be rid of you and pulled up tons of spuds, a full tub of you. Tiny pearls and fat rocks of you washed you and thanked God for you for not giving up on me. Okay, so now we've got an audience. Yippee, hello everybody. So Madeline Kinsella, Mads Kins, as me and Matt like to call her, Wow, I saw Madeline's work in Bido Lito, um, a Liverpool magazine, a couple of months ago, I think, and, um, oh, I've just had a pop-up, um, a couple of months ago, and I've had my eye on her ever since. She is just completely blowing my mind at the moment. She's currently studying for an MA in writing at Manchester Metropolitan University. She writes about Scouse, identity, vernacular and working class femininity. Her debut collection, Scouse Browse, is just about to be published by Wrecking Ball Press. You heard that here first. Her work's been featured in Bido Lito and 14 Poems. She's the editor of Jagzine. Hopefully, here she is. Okay, how do I do that? Oh yes, I've got it. Hopefully. Wonderful. Sonically delightful fashionista that is Madeline Kinsella. Yes! Hi, Laurie. <laughs> All right, lad, how's it going? Oh, yeah. It's going well, yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. Brink of a second lockdown, like, but I'm all right. I'm hanging in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm all right, you know. You always just look so incredibly stylishly beautiful. Oh, thank you. I try my best. <laughs> I'm liking the big bow that you're rocking this evening. Oh yeah, big, big, big top to bow, bit dramatic. Um, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you about fashion because I've been in Liverpool now for a couple of years, um, most weekends, and Scouse women have got such a distinctive style. Um, yeah, absolutely. you def yeah, you've totally got your own style going on, and I wanted to ask you about what fashion means to you. Like, do you think that it is um, an art form? Do you do you think of fashion as an expressive? art form and does how you feel influence the way that you dress um yeah i'd definitely say it was an art form if if i were pursuing poetry the way i do the way i'm doing now i'd be pursuing fashion um i grew up my mum was a seamstress and i kind of learned like not only like how to like construct a garment because that's what i do for work because i make clothes with it um so it's not only that but i learned like a great appreciation for fashion as an art form and as a craft and I'm just absolutely obsessed with high fashion and runways and I always have been. Um, and I always remember as in my first year of university and um, kind of like getting to grips, like trying to pursue poetry more. And I said to one of my tutors at the time, it's like, I can't, I've got to pick between, 
like we had to write a poem about something that we wear and something that we like and I was like well working class identity is very much part of like what I write about but I love fashion and I was like I can't make that work in a poem and she says well make it work and ever since it's like um I think it doesn't matter it's not about like a socioeconomic background when it comes to fashion because um there's that element in it and there's that commentary on it but I think it's very much individual style and how um you represent yourself and your identity to the world and I think it's an extremely prevalent thing in Liverpool and um, there's a massive culture around it and um, hence why me pamphlet is going to be called Scouse Browse and why um, I've got a poem called Scouse Browse because it's that whole idea of identity and um, that term is something that is kind of derogatory and is used against us but um, it's it's how you turn that, it's how you subvert that and um, I think it was um, Glam Gig Picks, is it, Gary is it? Yeah. He described me as the print poet laureate um, which was like an absolute medal of honour because <laughs> like a scouse printy, I don't know if you're onto it, don't you? No, I don't, I don't know all that is, Madeline, go on. Okay, so I feel like I'm not going to be able to explain it. Just a scouse printy is just like a term for like a very like feminine, like girly girl in Liverpool who's like classified by like certain designer clothes. So like, um, I mean, there's a shop in Liverpool called Cricket, and it's 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 like it's like the print heaven. It's like I'm I'm very fond of when they do a sale, like for um, like Sophia Webster's Christian Louboutin, Balenciaga City bag. Like there's a whole print demographic and. Um, it's just absolutely iconic. It's like ancient races is like the Met Gala and there's just so much in it and there's just so much pride when it comes to fashion in Liverpool and yeah. there's such a commentary on it and there's, it's, it's, I find it really interesting. It's something that has always fascinated me and something that I explore in my writing. Yeah, I feel like Liverpool women are like a little bit further ahead in terms of what they're wearing, I feel like it kind of like we catch on in Yorkshire like about six months later. Oh, you're frozen, mad. Am I? Can you still see me? Okay. Hmm. Okay, we're having a slight technical difficulty. Let's see if we can. Right, I'm going to remove Madeline and then try to get her to rejoin. Let's give that a go. Oh, we've had a minute. Are we, are we back? <laughs> yeah, we're back in business. All right, so I'm just singing your praises, Mads, and I think you are totally rocking that new title um, as the Prinny Poet Laureate. You've still got your own thing going on. I feel like I've never seen anyone um, looking and sounding like you before. I think you're dead exciting, okay. and I would love to hear one of your poems. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, let's see what I'm going to go for. Go for Scouts Browse. makes sense to follow with Scouts Browse. Yeah. Um, this was, like, kind of, like, when I was constructing my pamphlet, this was, like, the first poem that I wrote. Um, I wrote this book, um, I don't know, was 18 months ago, maybe. Um, and it was just kind of, like, the catalyst for everything that I wanted to explore. And um, I've had, like, a proper woeful time with editing it. It's had so many revisions. But I kind of like that because the stubborn attitude of the poem is very much the same as that of the speaker if that makes sense mm -hmm. um, so yeah it is scouse browse liverpool schoolgirl, already sussing out who she is with dark brown cold pencil a new arch embedded into her face big horrible slugs they grow and grow and consume her forehead in diameter a new shape to fill in uniform codes not adhering to uniform codes Makeup remover, parched and stale baby wipes. Never mind, there's always tomorrow. Uniform codes are not adhering to uniform codes. She has common eyebrows, by that they mean lower band, teen pregnancy, fat belief table eyebrows. Mr. Sterling and Ofsted don't like her eyebrows. P kits in blue JD bags, the meth box of lost and found, lip gloss, cheap body spray doused in it, a jog stiff note in an entryway paradise. A race back to the school gate before the bell catches her, but it always did, if not sooner be, than later. The pale-faced porter, shouting, back to class, take that makeup off, over and over, 
term after term. There's always tomorrow for the stubborn bitch with a foot of brow and a scowl to match to try again. That's yes. Madeline, well, I love that poem so much. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's so beautifully crafted, but I also feel like you could read a shopping list and like make that sound great <laughs> too. I love, I love the line about the big horrible slugs. Yeah, I love that one. Beautiful. That's, that's Beautiful. what they're always called in school. You got four slug brows. We had the opposite pr uh, problem in that English. So we had this whole thing about shaving our eyebrows off in the 90s. Like it was so trendy to have no eyebrows. Really? Like, no, like not even pencils? Yeah, I well, we would just pencil it on dead thin, yeah. like, yeah. I've had real issues trying to grow my eyebrows back. It's uh, It's been a lifetime yeah. uh, <laughs> problem, really. Um, yeah. Madeline, you use dialect and vernacular in your poetry, um, and so do I, and I just wonder, why is that Why is that important to you? When you decided to start writing poetry, why, were it, why did it feel important that you, you wrote in that way? Um, well, like, First and foremost, it's it's my natural voice. It's not um, when I write in that way. It's even though I'm consciously using that in my work, it's a very unconscious use of writing because it's like sometimes if um, I get notes on my work, there'll be a lot of punctuation mistakes and like spelling mistakes because um, I think especially with punctuation, it's like Scouse is kind of like this like one running voice. Um, and there's like certain like isms with like the scouse voice that um like sometimes like scouses will plural plurally pl make things plural make yeah. things plural when they're not meant to be or um they don't use as many inflictions so someone could ask you a question a scouser could ask a question and there'd be no infliction like i don't really use um like question marks if i can send a message to people and sometimes i can confuse people it's like it's a very singular voice um mm -hmm. So that, and then like in school, I was always told like that I had to like tone my accent down like, if I did like school events and things like that. And it's just kind of taming your tongue and forcing it to fold unnaturally. And that might sound like dead dramatic, but for me, like identity is everything. Like the most valuable thing to me is my accent because it, it's who I am and it's... um it's like my city, do you know what I mean? That's that, like how much that can come across through a dialect. Um, I'm quite, I'm very like proud. Like um, I've been, my words been described as stinking with pride for Liverpool and, and, and it's true, I, I love the place and I love my accent now that can represent a place that I'm so fond of. Yeah, I think that really comes across. I think the first poem that I ever read by you talks about exactly that. There's a line in it about holding the city at the back of your tongue. Like that would be so wicked to hear that if you've got that. Yeah, I've got that. Mother tongue. Yeah, mother tongue. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, my fringe is like that. Underestimate how long my fringe is. I'm like that. Oh, uh, Madeline, we must never apologise for our <laughs> growing fringes. People will never understand the pain we go through. All, all that, all that, all, all the day being a scouse print. <laughs> Mother tongue. At birth I sobbed, the metal rod, steaming red, branded my tongue, bruised me with floor, etched cackles onto my taste buds. My tongue burns every night, muscle memory. In the day she is senseless and sharp, asbestos mouth, my vows wide as wide. Tiny rusted hooks pull my lips taut. The branding tool scolds us all with accent. Steel alloy, Celtic and Lancashire. The midwives keep it in the storage cupboard between nappies and starch blankets. I carry this city in my mouth, gargle here, spit here out, cough here up and scrape here off the cobbles, cradle here in my tongue curls. I bring her TV fuzz on every sentence until each day ends. She is grateful. And to thank me, she burns. She burns in the back of my throat. Oh my God. I'm just, I wish you could see me. I'm like, my arms are just covered in goosebumps. I just, I'm just sat getting waves of goosebumps. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's so I nice to see you. I love that poem so much. Um, 
Madeline, you probably get asked this question a lot. I do. Um, or you probably get referred to a lot as a working class poet. I don't know. That's something like a, that's a label that I've sort of had stuck on me. And I wonder, like, how do you feel about the term working class poet? And and also, what do you mean by working class femininity? Um, it's a bit of a tricky one. If someone describes me as a working class poet, it depends who it is. Um, I would self describe myself as having working class poetics. It's on I as a working class person explore but that's not to say every single working class person explores that there's been times I've done readings because I've done like I've wrote nature poems I've wrote poems strictly about sexuality and femininity and the scouts voice has not came through as consciously or not even scouts voice a working class kind of idea with the work and there's people that have heard me read these like a nature poem and because I've got a regional accent they'll be like Oh, she's a working class poet, and it's just kind of code. It's kind yeah. of, um, I don't know, I, I don't like it, and I don't like the way um, it can sometimes be used in, um, like, some people say that working class poet slash low income poet slash underrepresented, and those three are not the same thing at all. And it can really, if, like, um, I've seen some things like on, like, like Twitter, it's like, 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 do you know what I mean? This kicking off there every day, but, um, Sometimes I see things that just kind of like rattle me about, um, it's like if I was middle class, I wouldn't be described as a middle class poet. Um, and you shouldn't, you know what I mean? Because your poetics are bigger than that. Um, but yeah, it depends where I'm coming from. I would like self-describe, but um, it's, it's, it's not. I don't know. It, it's it's a weird one. Do you know what I mean? It is a weird one, and I think it's strange, isn't it? Because like like me, your poetry is rooted in working class experience because you are from a working class background. But then the things that you're talking about are much bigger than that. Like the emotions that are brought up or the themes that are brought up are universal and classless. So yeah. being given that label, it's sometimes really unhelpful, and it's almost elitist too. I would yeah. never want anyone to not appreciate what I'm writing or what you're writing because they're not yeah. working class. Like, that's bullshit, isn't it? And yeah. Like, I didn't mean, like, when I started writing, like, working class, like, poetry, it was, like, it was kind of what came naturally to me. Like, when I went to uni, that was the first time I learned that people actually lived in villages. I didn't really think villages yeah. were, like, real. Just right. because I was stupid <laughs> that. Because I was, like, well, even, I don't know. Um, yeah, so... It's, it's just a bit of a weird one, like the whole denoting someone as a working class writer. It's like someone asked me once, like, how I research it. I was like, by by being alive, like, just by, by being poor, hun, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. And, and what not, about the phrase? Sorry, sorry, go on. I said it's not something I necessarily research. It's something, like, obviously, like, when it comes to, like, vernacular and it's, I, like, I read up on and things like that. But in terms of experience, it's just, me life it's just do you know what I mean you're right it's just living and like you say you don't ever hear the term middle class poet do you it's almost yeah. as though there's poet and then working class poet as though it's like a lesser version or a, an alternative yeah. version and it's like um, we're gonna sit at this table and we're gonna let these at this table uh, and then it comes there's a big thing when it comes to um like opportunities and like pay gigs and stuff like that it's like oh we're giving you expert we can pay these exposure because the work, yeah, right. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I could get into it. Could oh, yeah, no, we need to get right on my eye horse about people expecting us to perform for free. That's a whole other yeah. discussion. But, um, yeah, this, this term, we're working class femininity, what um, what does that mean to you? Um, what that kind of means to me is um, just how essential femininity is to working class experience. It's like me and myself, like when I think of, especially in terms of fashion, when I think back through periods of fashion, working class fashion, streetwear, I think of men's fashion mm -hmm. because that's what you're shown primarily. Um, and in terms of working class experience, it's like, um, I think of like men's working clubs and stuff like that. And I don't think there's enough noted necessarily on the female experience and how paramount that is in order to showcase that and also as a woman it's the only thing I I can really write about there's I've got poems in me um pampered that are from a male perspective but 
on the whole um i'm not necessarily the speaker of repeat poems but when i'm writing about my experience it's very much being a working class woman um and fem- not even like necessarily woman but like femininity and um obviously you know yourself i think even though we're from very different other sides of the country it's like that working class femininity still comes through in your work yeah i've got Oh. And the last poem in it literally lives rent free in my mind. Where is it? It says, and the last line of it is in the article. Day is not a dream. Um, when she remembers blue smoke rings up to heaven, wipes froth on a button sleeve. Day is not a dream. Like I can see it, and it's just like that kind of working class femininity hit the nail on the head yeah it's absolutely what's your own way in your own vernacular but it translates and it's universal in all it resonates with me do you know what i mean oh yeah absolutely thank you do you have that poem about um the ex being a model yeah i do i'm gonna save that down yeah okay save it okay so yeah go on go go um pick another one because um, this one I haven't performed. I don't actually think I've performed it. Um, actually, I might. I don't know. But anyway, um, where is it? It's called Date, and it's just very much um, mm. that kind of. Um, obviously, you, you. I know you've read it. Um, it's like the last last poem in my um, pamphlet. Um, I think it's kind of after. I don't know. I don't know. I'll just read it. I can't really. I love this kind of yeah. explaining them. Go for so it. So it is. Date. By the way, date is spelled D E R T. Probably like the, the way I pronounce it, but it's not important. Um, date. A substance that soils this city, the state of us girls, to have date on our tongues and no soap to wash it out. In science, I look down my blouse, waiting to become a woman. To be validated by touch like the lab rats we dissected. This makes a girl a dirt, a slut, for wanting, panting. A woman needs convincing, coercing, reasonable force. Boards up houses mark dirty streets. This is my home. I am the dirt. Where women before me have settled like dust mounting the TV stand. And from the dirt, I will rise. Oh, you're breaking my heart, man. <laughs> you're breaking my fucking heart, man. <laughs> oh my god, amazing. We're really like we're running out of time, and I'm so gutted. I feel like I just could like talk to you all evening, but um, yeah, I wanted to ask you like, how did you get into poetry? What what's been your experience of poetry at school, and like, who was the first poet that you really got into? Um, the way I got into poetry is um, my dad like was kind of like. Um, he, he he liked Oscar Wilde and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I I don't I don't pay it when it comes to like like anything past twentieth century. It's like I don't really know what any of you are saying. Um, and a lot of the titles in Latin and it's just a big turn off. Was so it when they did um, GCSE poetry or GCSE English literature? And you do like a poetry module and you have like those anthologies. Um, and it's, I'm trying to think who's in it. It's got like Pierce Buscelli in. Um, like, you know, like. Keith Yates or, or like old old white English canon and you get told like this is poetry this is what it is and this is how you read it and everyone's just like going along and then in the um in like the anthology was Medusa by Caroline Duffy mm. and I always remember um studying it and like I went to like a really rough school and like everyone in the class, like normally just be like lads at the back of the class, like swing on the back of the chairs and like throw on pens and stuff like that. And for some reason, this poem just resonated with the entire class because people could understand it off a first read. People just got what was getting said in the poem because it was accessible, which mm-hmm. is what poetry should be. Like I remember people in the class being like, oh, that's mad, that, like, oh, the way she's done that. And I was like, for me, I hadn't really ever read poetry necessarily I hadn't been exposed to it and it's like what people sometimes say to me is like oh you're making poetry accessible and it's like I'm not necessarily doing that but it's how limited that kind of poetry is and how maybe it's to do with the thing with value and how much we value English canon um rightly or wrongly but um 
I felt like it was something that I was, um, what's the word? Like, was being, like, deprived from me. And then, so Caroline Duffy, Medusa, was, like, a big turning point for me. And then um, I, I kind of went to uni because I wanted to be a songwriter. Um, in my article, I'd be the Lisa would joke saying I wanted to be the Scouse Journey Mitchell. And I was like, um, I said to me, I was like, oh, songwriting's just the same as poetry, isn't it? And he was like, no, it's not. And I was like, okay, leathered. Um, but now I think about it, and I think um, sometimes people can be precious about it, but I think definitely songwriting and songwriters and lyrics it definitely influenced me where because um people say like oh like oh, this person's lyrics are poetry and it's like sometimes like well it's not it's a different medium they have the, they're in their own right there's there's a truth in that because i think the main most important thing in poetry in any art form or in any art form is a resonance with the reader or the listener if you it's not about um, it's not about you, it's about what you can give to other people with your work, do you know what I mean? Absolutely, it's how it makes you feel, isn't it? Yeah. Ultimately, and I think there's a lot of kind of snobbery with poetry, I think partly because maybe we, uh, because of the canon, but then also partly because, you know, perhaps we place too much value on that, but I think there's a little bit of like Emperor's New Clothes going on with poetry sometimes. It's almost though as though when we read something that's so incredibly abstract it makes us think oh that must be good then like oh wow yeah you know that's yeah good. but for me like if i read something and i don't understand it like that's not a good poem for me like if i yeah. read something and it and it hits me right in the fucking heart you know if i read something and it sets my soul on fire like man that's a good poem you know yeah, definitely. that's all that poetry is whether it's a song or a you know in a, in yeah. a more traditional format um, yeah oh we're getting loads of love for that comment Yes. And I think it puts people off writing poetry, this idea that there's a kind of baffling set of rules that yeah. only, like certain yeah. people can understand. Um, yeah, definitely. Or it's like you have to write in a certain kind of old English way or um, I, like use the word upon in every <laughs> context, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think it's all like that poetry when it was written, that people understood it because that's how people spoke back then, Yeah. Isn't it? And like, like we don't read poetry then as well. It was it was rich people, do you know what I mean? Right. Like Wordsworth was, was kicking about while his wife ironed his caps, talking about daffodils and clouds and all that. Like, do you know what I mean? What was like the working class people of the day doing? They went yeah, right. Well. Yeah, fuck Wordsworth. Yeah, of course. Hashtag fuck Wordsworth. <laughs> Alright, Mad. <laughs> so I'm gonna have On that note. <laughs> On that note, it's been such an absolute honour and pleasure chatting um please finish our session off with the uh, final poem okay i'll do um i've got one here i, I, I really like it you know of the same themes again it's called yeah I'll, I'll get a swig of water have a swig it's called the honeybees on the theater roof it's about the everyman theater um kind of it's about whatever you want it to be about but it's with that in mind mm -hmm. the honeybees on the theater roof on a tour of the theatre, they tell us that they keep bees on the roof, that their honey has a distinctive taste as the bees in the hive. Instead of feeding on flowers, they eat the abandoned sweets from the pavement of our childhood city. That evening, as we kiss goodnight, as we had done many nights before, I listened for notes of your being. I felt on my palate your diet of experience trying to gauge your shelf life with my lips. That evening I tasted your life. Your mouth, a honeycomb. My taste buds, a hive, swarming into you, vibrating like tiny gramophones. I want to tell you about my day, to regurgitate my thoughts into you, and we call that love, our ability to eat the past and make it taste like a future. Oh my god. Madeline Kinzella with your silky smooth scouse voice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Did Thank you finish you that? Was that the end of the poem? Did I just yeah. Like completely interrupt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the end of the poem. I had awful feeling that we're about to go into another verse. Madeline, thank you so much for joining Thank us you for having me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to maybe seeing you in Liverpool sometime soon. Yeah. See you okay. soon. Bye. Big massive love.
Thank you, Madeline. Bye. 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 Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I'm feeling the love and um, yeah, thanks for joining us. I will have a proper read through um, the comments after. Yes, I did it. Ma, if you're watching, I'm sure your OCD has been absolutely through the roof, but it all worked out great. Okay, love you all. Bye.